Hey everyone, Max at 343 Labs here. We're a music production school based in New York City, Berlin, and online. And today, I'd like to show you a clip by one of our instructors, the one and only John Selway, which is taken from his weekly stream, which airs right here on our channel. Now, if you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification below. Let's get into it. So this is one of the recently updated devices. It's called Octopulse, and it's a bank of eight pulse generators that work together in some unique ways. And I used it to um, create the, the drum pattern that's gonna run. I only used four of the pulses, but um, here I'm triggering this kick on the, on the drum rack. And it's just uh, using the um, Max for Live drum synth modules. And uh, yeah, so let's what take I've a listen here, to it a little bit. Actually, I'm yeah. curious to hear what this sounds like, and then you can like break it down for us. Exactly. So I've just got to get the that pesky sequencer synced up with the black hole uh, latency. There we, there we go. go. And um, yeah, so what we have essentially, I'll just solo the kit for a brief moment, is um, this uh, three sixteenth note pattern from the kick, but I've got it going through a subtraction engine, which is actually the first Max for Live device we released. And this allows me to say, hey, um, never turn off the, the first downbeat never allow the two or the four to play through that's a little electro tip usually uh, you're gonna want, gonna want to leave those uh without a kick drum if you're doing some sort of breakbeat oriented stuff but all the other possible drum hits in between have a 50 percent chance of randomizing every four bars so i can like control on the one hand which steps randomize and which don't and then the interval at which the others randomize and i can make it so that some will randomize less or more often than others with these percentage sliders. And then I've got a snare over here. Um, and actually, before I do that, let's just go and see if I set the 16th note as the bass rate. Now, if I, if I set the multiplier down to one, then we're gonna hear a much busier kick yeah, pattern, but it's still never gonna play on the two or the four, um, which are the fifth and 13th 16th notes respectively all right but, no, uh, I, yeah. let me just jump in there for a second so like what you're doing here with the, generating this beat you're able to like determine you know it's generating stuff based on math but like you're also able to guide it so it stays within a framework so like you're saying avoid this beat avoid that beat you you can have it so it's not interacting in a way you don't want it to and so you can emphasize or de-emphasize things that keep it a specific type of a groove so like this is kind of like a idm -y electro thing going on here to my to my mind but like this is for an electro groove you've got to have certain beats always happening they can't just randomly change or it breaks the vibe Right, yeah. and that's why I've got the first downbeat always happening. That's right. never going to be muted. And I've just disabled the subtraction engine briefly so everyone can hear what this 16 times 3 pattern sounds like. And I've got it um, resetting every two bars. So we've got this sort of hemiola pattern restarting every two bar cycle. But then if I go and re-enable our subtraction engine, it's sort of selectively removing some of those uh, kick hits making it a little more spacious, but also ensuring that certain uh, hits we don't want to hear never play. For example, where the snares happen. And so I've got right. this second pulse, um, also just generating an 8 16th note pulse, which is also offset um, here. And this is one of the new features with the Octo Pulse, which I don't want to spend too much time on, but we've got this whole new advanced mode feature where each pulse now finally has its own discrete offset and bar reset. So you can have a bunch of different cycles resetting at different intervals um, for all these different elements. And then, uh, yeah, I'll enable this little rim shot here as well. I got to tell you, when it, w w somebody in the chat, CSS Element, is already saying my brain hurts. Yeah, I gotta, <laughs> I'll try and avoid getting lost too much in the weeds, but here's one of our uh, free devices, this MIDI sample and hold. Um, so it's taking every 16th note coming from our uh, pulse that's generating the hi-hat here, yeah. 
and I've got it assigned to the decay. So that's why we're getting that sort of skittery um, pattern on the hi-hat that would otherwise be uh, quite static. If I turn the depth down, then the hi-hats are just not moving around. But as I increase the depth, we get all this nice movement that's um, really uh, a little more compelling, I find. And okay. then just to get super nerdy on one of the features of all these free devices, all the MIDI ones at least, that is a little bit under uh, discussed, I feel, is that right now it is randomizing every single note it receives, 100% times every single note. But I can say, let's increase that. And now you'll see that the, there's a gap there. Now, now it's generating a new random value every two hi-hat pulses that come in. And we can say only randomize 75% uh, of those, for example. So now even the randomize, it's, even the randomization itself is randomized. Okay. Um, just to create a little more uh, movement or have a little more control, like for example, with our MIDI envelope generator, it's fun to trigger an envelope only every third chord stab or something. So instead of right. forcing it to generate every single note, you have a little more control. Got it. Yeah, I mean, if you're starting from scratch, one element that I, I recommend people using these devices, it comes bundled free with all of our paid devices, is this global hub. And that determines the scale and key that all of our devices are gonna use. I've also got settings like a global swing, for example, to impose the swing setting in all the devices in sync. You can also randomize to a right, new scale so and key if you don't know where to start. Is. Yeah, so it's what binds all of these devices together. So as we examine the pattern base, or yeah, it's pattern base tracks, got the pattern engine on there, you'll see it's adopted that blue scale in the key of E. All right, so global, that, the global hub's on your master, and yeah. you've selected a particular scale, and all the other devices that accept that scale information that you load up in the project will follow what the global setting is. That's correct, awesome. yeah. And and you can exempt certain devices from that. For example, in certain situations, you might want to leave, for example, a device that's triggering a drum rack uh, as chromatic, mm -hmm. because if you force it to a scale, maybe then it's going to miss some of your drum pads Got it. that you don't want. But um, yeah, so then you can just click this toggle to set it to a local pin mode or toggle back to the global mode there. Cool. And so then, um, yeah, like I do want to like get some concepts out there, but I also want to just play the tunes. So yeah, let's hear it. We started with Pattern Engine last time and yeah, man, trying to get that third. There we go. Magic third time. Uh, I don't use black hole often, but so what we have here is a five step pattern. And this allows me to um, randomize the pitches, that sort of sh shuffle button. Every four bars, it's going to select a new uh, pitch for those. And we sort of examined that uh, last time around, but what we have now is this new randomization mode called Decide. And uh -huh. in Decide mode, I can specify two different um, note pitches. So in other randomization modes, these specify the minimum and maximum range of randomization, the highest and lowest it could go to. But in Decide mode, it's only those two uh, pitch values that it can randomize to. And so one way to think about it is now, and I'll, I'll reduce the interval to uh, two bars. What is um, what is being decided right now? Which instrument that we're listening to should be for the change? So it's the synth bass. Awesome. Right? And um, yeah, so in this advanced mode where you get access to all those advanced per step uh, randomization settings, in that mode and only in that advanced mode, I can randomize with this small little dice, I can randomize those minimum and maximum values. Um, now, I might wanna 
prefer to set them manually for whatever reason um, to say I want a certain step to probably be lower and others to be higher but one way to think about it now uh, and there the, the decide mode has also been implemented in some other devices that make use of it in a slightly different way but one way to think about this with pattern engine is now I've got like two sets of possible values that any of these steps could be randomized to at any time so there's sort of like version a and version b but certain steps will be in version a and certain steps will be in version b anytime they're randomized between so you can kind of interpolate between different versions of uh of the pattern i think and, anything um, like because you know it's this isn't totally random but there is some are unexpected things that can happen and it seems just that adding this capability is giving you more control over those things like it's 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 a, a more refined way of handling the variation without resorting to completely randomizing things exactly it's controlled chaos controlled at chaos core. is always it's always necessary to make all right you can have completely random sounds and uh, to, and try to make music with it but like it is if you lose the patterns and you if it's not recognizable then it just drifts into craziness right so we've got to set a limit and you're giving exactly. more options in this generative way of creating melody and rhythm you're giving more options to control the chaos totally and uh you know if you really want to control the chaos and what i recommend a lot of people do in you know it's one thing to use this live and you can interact with it in all kinds of performative ways but as you say exactly you know when you are producing a song ultimately at some point you need some of your uh elements to become a little more reliable you yeah. need to know the notes that it's going to play and so um one thing that we could do with a pattern base for example and all these parts that are being generated is to um perhaps record some midi yeah always capturing the output of the generative sequence is a really good idea uh Absolutely, and with Live 11's new uh, take lanes, ah. we can... Also audio, but yeah. Yeah. Let me just... Woo! Max is in the house. Max Wild, our fearless leader here at 343 yeah. Labs. What's up? We got Mr. Allo Allo. Allo Allo from Bordeaux. A few other new names in the chat here. Aaron 303, what's happening? I'm just talking a little bit while he's noodling. <laughs> We're almost to the halfway point here on Selway's Electro Saturdays with Noah Pred from Manifest Audio. We could also I would just have fun just sitting here listening to you like make crazy music like this for a while. William so Meyer, now yeah, go ahead. We've got all our take lanes here. And we can just start comping together our favorite bits right. that we recorded from the pattern engine. So if you could scoot it over a little bit, uh, so, uh, so we could see it. it. Right now, it's uh, yeah. There you go. Perfect. Um, yeah. So this is a great way to capture the generative output from any of these devices to record some take lanes. You know, and it's so funny. Like I knew you could comp MIDI. But I keep forgetting to do it. Thank you for this reminder. It is amazing to be able to do that. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I mean, I could have comped it um, as uh, as audio just as well as MIDI. But MIDI, I find a little more flexible. And then I can still all go back and automate my filter parameters and oh, whatnot. It totally makes sense in, in this situation with this real time. Because you're not just using MIDI sequencing and ge generation. You're also using you know, modulation to change the sounds. And if you want to keep being able to do that, you know, once you commit that to audio, then but all those parameters are unavailable. So. Totally. So uh, one of the other things I want to show is this other utility that much like Global Hub comes bundled free with all of our uh, paid devices. It's called X Relay, and it's a system that allows you to freely pipe MIDI to and from any channel in your set. And so in node mode, it's set to receive. And in relay mode, you can send MIDI. Okay. And so right now it's actually receiving MIDI from 
that kick drum here. So if I go to uh, the kick channel, you'll see I've got a relay sending on this relay conduit nine. There are 64 relay conduits okay. you can choose from. And the reason I'm sending it here is I've got this very busy uh, bass pattern. Which we like, by the way, there's a comment about that bass sound. It sounds really nice. Oh, nice. That's always That's always good to hear. But, you know, it might be nice if it got out of the kick drum's way a little bit. And, of course, we could resort to our standard uh, Ableton Live compressor. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Are you saying that whenever the kick drum plays, we, that we don't hear a bass note because it's being removed whenever a kick drum plays? Well, it will once I set the pattern engine to this side ah, mode, so it's receiving wow. that kick. Holy moly. So moving a little fast, so it's kind of hard to discern, maybe. Mm -hmm. But just as a side question here from Manuel Gloda, all of the sound is Ableton devices. Uh, it actually is, yes. Okay. It, in fact, it is. So I've got this uh, lead sound here, and it's receiving MIDI from the pattern engine. I put it on Relay Seven for some reason. Um, and this pulse engine is great for a lot of things, but it can also generate sort of ornamental ear candy kind of stuff. And that was my intention in sending it the um, the uh, the MIDI from the pattern engine. And I'm just gonna double check and make sure. This is this is some high level stuff going on here. Okay, now we're hearing those notes come out a little more reliably. And yeah, so I've created a new fill mode in the new version of Pulse Engine where it's only gonna play notes in between incoming notes. Got it. And right now, all of these um, 16th notes from the pattern engine are not leaving any room for it to fill in. So what I'm gonna do is go back to the pattern engine track and reduce the play chance here on the uh, chance engine and uh, I think oh yeah <laughs> I've got the chance that pulse will be generated set to zero percent uh -huh. so we won't hear anything until what So now it's having this sort of conversation, but it's quite busy still. So, mm -hmm. you know, my preference for this kind of interstitial ornamentation, as I described, is to set the pulse probability a bit lower. And the variance is the chance that the rate of these pulses will change. This, of course, is adhering to the scale and key determined by the Global Hub. And I can set the pitch internally or set it to be, um, you know, a certain amount of semitones higher than whatever pitch it last received, in this case, from that Relay 7. So hopefully starting to see uh, some of the possibilities, the way these different devices can interact. I can hide the viewer, but it's kind of useful to see um, some of the notes. And we've got this hold percentage here. And right now we're not seeing any of the blue note output because it's in solo mode. But if I allowed it to play the pattern engine notes that are coming through, then we see them as this blue line here. But you can hide the viewer. It's just kind of useful to understand what's going on a little better. And one of the, my favorite new features I added to the Pulse Engine is this um, note length decay. So within each triggered cluster of notes, each note within that cluster will become progressively shorter in length uh, with this decay at a negative value. So yeah, that's uh, that that's a crazy. thing. That's a thing that's happening. Um, yeah, and then uh, let's see what's going on here. Um, Are you playing a which synth are you playing? That squiggly sound that you've been that you put in. That's that's just an instance of operator oh, okay. actually with a, with a user wave I drew in to the oscillator earlier. I see. And a bit of FM from the second uh, oscillator there, and uh, gotta have some spread on that thing. Definitely. It's a little uh, yeah, it's a little goofy sounding. I'm try I think I have to reinstantiate this chance engine. I just um, I so wanted I'm to go 
go back into that sound a little bit. When it's playing super fast, sort of glitchy, ratchety things, what's causing that? So, right, yeah, it goes super fast because I can specify a maximum, the fastest rate here, mm -hmm. and the minimum slowest rate here. So, I've set it up now so that it's always going to be between 16 and 64th note values. Um, and it's straight, so it'll ignore triplets or dotted, but I could just as easily say no straight, and then it would only be triplets and dotted within that range. And I can make it go up to 128th notes, for example, right. and then it would be even more uh, crazy and squiggly. Indeed. So uh, and Mike Harding in the chat is asking, is this triggering everything in the track? So I think we want to be clear with everyone on you know each instrument there you hear that you're hearing right you've got the drums you've got a bass right. line you've got this kind of squiggly glitchily glitchy what did i just say glitchily <laughs> i just made up a word um melody that's happening on top yeah and yeah. so like just let's just clarify what is doing what in this case so for anyone who's just yeah. tuning in the the pulse leads are are the, the the one sound that we're hearing are being generated strictly by this pulse engine. Okay, so the pulse engine is the sequencer basically. It's playing the notes. Right. And yeah, it's reacting it's, to something else though, right? Right. So it's only allowed to play notes when this pattern bass is not playing notes because I've got a receiving MIDI from that track via my little node relay system. Okay. And it's set to fill mode. If I set it to free mode, it just it's going to ignore. Okay. It's just going to continue. All um, right. So when, whenever something isn't playing on the other track, it plays something. In fill mode, yes. And also in side mode. But the nice thing about fill mode is it takes those gaps between incoming notes as an opportunity to trigger a new rate as per variance so it's rather speeding than... up and slowing down as well the pattern yeah yeah uh the, or right so we, each note off is a trigger to change this rate so okay. like this otherwise in free mode you can specify the span at which that variance will be triggered so right now it's every quarter note that rate is changing and we're hearing the sound is monophonic with a portamento so it's bending between notes because they're exactly longer with, note a, lengths. with a probabilistic hold there yeah which is a cool effect as well um i'm not sure why it's stuck on that but i mean this is complex stuff even the creator can get stumped by its behavior occasionally <laughs> there's, a, there's a there's a flush button but it's not and which which is there for that situation cool. to flush stuck notes that's but a it good thing to know uh, if you're diving into flushing. this you're like what's going on it's stuck hit the flush button all right it's kind of like a panic exactly. button yeah it's the logo usually i have doubling as that or um sometimes that could be the viewer yeah there we go okay so anyway um all right so that's that sound and then that's we have the bass sound and the bass is the bass. being played by the pattern engine right which is this lovely uh thing it's just a five step pattern that's mm -hmm. resetting every bar okay and then the drums are being generated from the uh octopulse with some constraints imposed by the subtraction engine and some other stuff we'll get into oh yeah i All didn't right. show on the on the rims another one of our free devices is the um note realm so when you're hearing sort of beat repeaty uh pitch drop repetitions on the rim shot so it's an audio it's from effect. the note realm no it's a midi effect so oh, it's, it's coming before it's... the simpler here i see and so i could tell the pitches to go up in value or down in value but they'll stay in this key which for drums is maybe less relevant but it's probabilistic so we can say notes you know, realm. So it's kind of almost like a MIDI delay, but it's still also doing pitch transposition. It is a MIDI delay. Uh -huh. It's a MIDI echo. Okay. But the thing that I came up with for this effect is, you know, when you have a normal MIDI echo, the echoes just continue going up and then either stay at the highest MIDI note, mm -hmm. which is like C8 or something, G8, I think or kind of disappear and i i gave it this bounce mode so that when it hits a maximum value it'll then reverse direction and start bouncing downward oh, okay. so i have to turn turn the velocity up that sounds really cool but they keep getting re-triggered because they're, they're too close together but 
if you put it on chords or something. Um, and then again, all of those pitch shifted MIDI notes are within a scale as well. So it's staying within like a scale or a key. Exactly. It's all adhering to that global global hub. All right. Manuel Glod is uh, asking, how do you deep like speaking of to when things are going wrong or crazy and you don't understand what's doing what? How do you debug this? Like how do you figure out where you are? Right. Okay. Uh that's a that's a great question. Um like uh I've done some pretty in-depth audio visual installation work using these tools and it's in fact it's like that practice of um creating some of those intricate um experiences that drives my practice of developing these tools it makes me realize oh, i need this to do that mm -hmm. and so i use those as opportunities to really thoroughly um test all the devices can they run for eight hours mm -hmm. in this you know intensive situation and I mean, I'm just keeping track of what's where, but mm -hmm. I mean, I built the thing, so it's kind of right. maybe easier for me to do that than than necessarily um, anybody who might be using them. Sure. But well, uh, let me just kind of. I also want to maybe reinterpret that question in not necessarily in development of these tools, but like using them and making music, and you're connecting this to this, and you got these things interacting, and like, how do you right. keep track of that? And if something's going yeah. wrong, is there a quick way of figuring out what that is? or any advice you have there maybe? Well, it depends on what's going wrong. I mean, uh, I haven't experienced that too much, but mm. we've got devices like this Note Scoper, for example. It's Notes? just a utility. Oh, so you can see where, what, it's gonna what yeah. It's gonna show you like what, what, what MIDI is coming in. That's very valuable. Um, it's kind of like when you're using Spectrum and on your audio. Exactly, it's very much like that. And I've got an audio um, sort of version of that. So it's showing the real time and the the slow roll there simultaneously along with the um outgoing velocity Excellent. and note in this example and then um yeah i don't want to get too into all of those but another tool another free tool in well included in the bundle of paid devices is a little track note utility so i could say um sent all oh, right i've seen some nice devices like this before you can nine. like keep track of things and help help you keep organized like writing in text that kind of thing save with, exactly like, saving just, with the the rack or whatever exactly so just to give you yourself little reminders so all you ought to do is type directly in this little window and hit enter and then it'll save with your set great so that can be helpful for reverse engineering stuff going i realize forward. i'm right in front of it in the in the window i have to kind of get out of the way a little bit Nice. Um, so, so I'm just going to add a chance engine here to get um, some notes generated. So chance engine is designed to probabilistically manipulate incoming notes, but it can also be used in a generative mode, which is what I'm going to do here. So is that I'm the chords say, we're hearing right now? Yeah, those pads that just came in. All right. So we're going to hear it in... Um, Hmm. Should be hearing it more often. I don't understand what's going on. Whoa. Uh oh. That's uh, black hole again. Okay. Yeah, the whole internal audio routing thing can be problematic sometimes. But. So, what I'm trying to do is to get. Um, Get this note playing a little longer. Okay. To uh, generate some randomized chords that were coming out, which, you know, was naturally working wonderfully earlier today, but it's currently being. You know, little, once you hit uh, live, once you go live on the stream, all bets are off. This is how it is. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so you might have noticed that. Um, actually, I'll just put this into process mode. Okay. And put a put a long note in here that's that's gonna get us there I think right. that'll work we're still a little out of sync let's you know what let's take a break from the beats a little bit and just listen to that one track so everybody knows okay. what's going on there we go so here we go we've got these pads going through that's a nice. and I'm randomizing the pitch and you might have noticed 
that when I dragged it in from the browser, it automatically inherited that scale and key right. from Global Hub. And that's why I created Global Hub is because I got really tired of navigating through this scale menu every time I brought a new device in. And so it's simply a way to, um, you know, make that process a little easier. I think I want this um, just chord to as be a little aside, longer. When you finish this track and arrange it, you have to do a section with just the chords because it's so pretty. Ah. Oh. You're a, you're such a gentleman, John. I am. Um, I'm a sweetheart. <laughs> so we've got our free little MIDI LFO on here, which is assigned to this uh, wavetable position. It's hard to kind of hear, but it's got um, some fun features mm -hmm. where, you know, live's MIDI LFO is great, but it doesn't actually reset with MIDI re-triggering, which is a nice yeah, thing you can do with this. Yeah, that's important. Um, I was just going to ask you, what's the difference? If you're using the built-in stuff that comes with live or whatever, what's the difference with the regular live F LFO and yours? And you just did, you just said one of them. <laughs> what, I can also um, make this the LFO cycle probabilistic. So now it'll only cycle 61.4% of the time or whatever, wherever you set this value to. Whoa. Um, That's a new one for me. I hadn't thought of that. But it totally and makes sense now that you've put, thrown that in there. I'm like, that could be very useful. Right. And uh, let's see. I've got also like the filter frequency here manipulated by this LFO, which is also in our free mod squad. And it, one of the things it does, so exam for example, the uh, rates are a lot more flexible. I've got uh -huh. a base rate of one whole note times four so it's a four bar rate but i could also do you know three or whatever any any value there so you can get really creative with those and i've got it you know if you want normal lfo per behavior uh with very smooth value changes you can leave it on the default high quality setting mm -hmm. but for me it's quite interesting to actually quantize that stepping especially with a continuous tone like this pad stepping so now you're and quantizing a modulator like that that's a really cool idea yeah so now you're starting to hear the 32nd note in the uh change of the frequency as it moves up and down if i set it to like 16th note dotted there it's really obvious now and we can smooth that so that those changes are you know we're hearing the stepping but it's not like a that almost looks like a, a, a fractal waveform it's like a waveform in a waveform it kind of is. That's not a bad way to think about it. Um, yeah, let's see if our chance stabs want to do anything here. Okay. There we go. So I'm, I think it was something to do with uh, the length of note. I was trying to get the other chance engine to spit out. It was uh, struggling with that uh -huh. for some reason. But So I'm just going to solo these chords that I have coming in now. And so... So I can say, play every 16th note. And this is the chance the pitches will be randomized. And um, turn this down for a moment. But I'm just gonna show how uh, decide mode works here. So it's gonna decide strictly between these two values. Okay, now that's like a really way too hyperactive pattern. All right. So I'm going to set it back to every 5 16th notes, right? And then I could reduce the play chance. Then we're just going to get these sort of intermittent stabs coming uh -huh. through. Or I could set it back to um, that busier 16th note pattern. And then just bring the play chance down on those. So we occasionally get some more interesting doubling up, mm -hmm. but still happening less often. And then one of the new features with the latest version of Chance Engine is this probabilistic swing. So I can apply a swing amount here, but there's zero chance they'll be swung. If I want to hear a normal swing on it, I would set the swing chance to 100%, but if you follow, You'll understand now that on a per note basis, currently there's 
a 46% chance that each hit would be swung by the uh, allowable oh, wow. amount. That's and then great, because in real life, when you play an instrument, percussive or not, with a swing or a groove, it changes. And sometimes you might want to sound more straight, and sometimes you might want to sound more swung or whatever. And this kind of simulates that. Exactly. That was my thinking. And then down here, we've got an additional randomized short delay for even more humanization. And what I was thinking would be cool to do with this feature would be to record the MIDI and then take the bits that are have cool little swing artifacts mm -hmm. and then export that uh, as a groove, extract that's that as a, a groove that's a great to the idea. groove pool. So it's a kind of, you can think of it as a groove generator, but I'm oh, just totally. going to turn that swing down right. for now because nothing else is swinging. Um, but I did want to show that, you know, I have this mic plugged in with oh, our boy. X Translate device. Oh wait, hold on. Before you dive into that, that's really amazing. Um, just to say, we're sort of in the home stretch here. It's about 10 to 2. Hope everybody's enjoying nerding out with us and know, with Noah getting deep into these amazing devices. Now, in general, we had a question here from Coseps. Um, oops, one second. He's asking. He's looking at the website and is asking if you could expand a little on the di on the different bundles, right? So when you're looking at what's available on the website, like where do you where do you start? Yeah, so we have three bundles that we've just launched, and I'm I'm very glad you asked because like uh, yeah, my friends remind me to do better promotion, and I often forget that part. Uh, yeah, so if you want all of our paid devices, you get the Ultra Bundle. If you just want the MIDI generators stuff that uh, we've been looking at so far then you could get away with just grabbing the Max MIDI bundle. But if you want to use the audio effects, which we'll have time to look at one or two maybe in these final moments, then you could just get the Max audio bundle. But the Ultra bundle includes all of our Max MIDI effects and all of our Max audio effects, as well as all of our live rack toolkits, which you don't need Max for. But we just released a okay, new toolkit. Okay, so the kit rack toolkits rack are just using live device, regular live devices. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But um, configured in some fairly clever ways, I would like to think. Um, for example, we've got a bunch of audio cords, so you can apply a cord to any audio using the latest racks. Cool. Um, with a selection of sixty-seven different cord types. But um, this is getting way too busy. It's Let really me just busy. I actually, those, I turned the volume down a little bit down. while you were talking about the different packs. But uh, I want to talk what, uh, briefly about this audio effect that All right. translates uh, any audio source in real time. Ideally, you know, it might be a guitar. I've seen some people using it to fantastic effect with uh, right. wind instruments, for example. And I'm not doing anything with it yet. I've just got it receiving my mic signal. And you'll see it's set to Relay 5. I've got the Relay system built in. Mm. But you only need to use that with it in Live 10 and Live 11. I've got it actually routed to these Vox chords. And it sees that there's MIDI on that track. Even right. though it's an audio track, Do me a it favor. sees it in there. Let's, let's mute the drums and the busy stuff and focus on just what that's doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I then if there's uh, time, what I said before, and I think we've got a, a request from the chat as well. If we can like make at least one thing from scratch just to show the the process totally all right so i'm gonna leave these these funny little bits going here um but uh yeah essentially let's see oh right i disabled the uh oh here we go hello so these are some synth chords that uh the the relay is being used actually just to con conform everything to the scale and key. But I'm taking the real-time MIDI extracted from everything I'm saying to you right now. And it's being expressed through this chord constrained to the scale and key with X Relay, which if you use it for nothing else, at least it'll talk to the global hub to um, keep all of your tracks in that same scale and key you might be using for other devices. All right, so wait, and just I hold on a sec. What what are we hearing right now? Oh my God, that's crazy. So yeah, <laughs> what you're hearing essentially 
And I can re-pitch and adjust the velocity of the output. You're hearing MIDI triggering this pad of a wavetable. And it's being triggered by my voice. Okay, so, you, so I'm, uh, there, your voice, the audio's coming in, and then something's listening to that audio and generating triggers based on the amplitude. X Translate is in real time detecting the pitch and amplitude. Okay. And it's, ex it's sending th these pitches here and this velocity. Um, and I've transposed it up, and it's going to stay also in that E blue scale, unless you. Okay, and then it's being don't quantized to. to a scale. And I can quantize it uh, rhythmically in real time as long as the uh, transport is okay. playing. So now we're going to get these kind of like slightly more rhythmic 16th note mm. uh, artifacts, or I, I could set it to eighth note. I have a question for you. Okay, so it's generating chromatic notes. Can it do in between pitch information? Like, it, could this work with something like MPE to actually do like microtonal stuff? I mean, is that so, like a future idea? Maybe <laughs> there's a way to export the raw frequency information, uh -huh. but uh, and yeah, I guess theoretically I could send that as an MPE signal, I could convert it to some kind of MPE signal. But most people are working with MIDI devices. Right. MIDI effects don't receive raw frequency. Yeah. They need that frequency converted to a MIDI note that it can play. But the really cool thing here is that um, I've got this vocoder and I've set the vocoder to receive the chords that are being generated from my yeah. voice on this other track. And so now if I unmute this, we're going to hear real time vocoding. Fantastic. Uh, from my vo voice. I love this. And I can change the pitch. You know, one of the things about using a vocoder and pl if you have to play chords and keys at the same time, it's really hard. Yeah, so it's extracting <laughs> the pitch information from my voice. So now you with could... a few little artifacts I could adjust. So you could just talk and everything will sound cool because of the, the scale and the chords and, and, and it's, it's... Oh, this is great. That's the idea. And then... And this is the most electro thing you've done in this whole stream. <laughs> I'm going to set the pulse leads to relay five. And so now they're going to listen to my voice and they're going to start having a conversation with me. Uh-oh. So they're going to answer you. Yeah, they're going to answer me. What an amazing live performance so tool I'm, as well. I'm going to bring the pitch down on them so they're a little less, uh, you know. My gosh. Might bring the volume up. And so they automatically shut up when I talk. And now they start doing stuff again. And what, what I didn't get into at all, unfortunately, is like the X effects which um, I think I'll turn off the vocoder, which is a bit distracting, but the pulse leads will still go in between my voice. So I've got this suite of um, audio effects that also can be controlled uh, by notes within a scale and key and can receive notes via the same relay system to control, for example, if I go to the snare, um, to control the delay time. So... The delay time of the snare, if I solo that, might be kind of subtle, but if I increase the feedback, then oh. as I change the pitch of my voice, it's going to change this transposed delay time. Dude. So, yeah, it's it's ultra nerd nonsense. And but a lot no, of this, it's, it's great for the expressiveness, and especially like, okay, you could use any audio, not your voice, right? It could be any audio. But if it is your voice, or like you could you could have like an, a, an audio instrument or just be playing a keyboard and in while you're performing or jamming, like whatever you play or whatever you say or sing is going to affect all sorts of sounds and things in the music, which is incredible. There's so many, I can imagine a lot of different ways to use this, right? And what you've just done with the vocoder is just one really cool example of that. That's great. Yeah, awesome. And I mean, it doesn't have to receive it from audio that's being translated through X-Translate, although that's a great option. It can also receive 
just from MIDI that's being played. So if I uh, played some MIDI notes here, if I set this to a relay and put it on relay 13, and let's just write in a couple, couple notes real quick. Um, People are already asking for more time. They're like, no one needs two hours. Ha! I love it. I love it. So now this would be getting, um, let's hear. So I don't know if y'all can hear the delay time being changed yeah. because it's receiving that, that CG pattern. It's being conformed to the scale I hear the key, pitch whatever, going whatever. Down. You know, for everybody, yeah, exactly. some people might be unfamiliar with the concept of using very short delay times with feedback to generate some like an oscillation and that's a very also if you're making electro very classic effect to do in electro totally and you can use it on vocals whatever yeah. i've got uh let's see what do we have in the x effects we've got um we have a comb filter we have uh some utilities x connect which allows you to similar to the x relay you can pipe audio to and from any device in your set and sort of crossfade blend it with the signal that's already there hmm. so allows for much more flexible audio routing into for example uh chains on a rack got it uh, but anyway we've got like a the x filter so that would allow you to um play a resonant low pass filter that's following a midi pattern or inversely you could remove uh, notes around, hmm. for example, a bass line that's moving around. You could use yeah. that to um, control a notch filter to pull uh, those exact frequencies that is playing out of some other uh, element that might otherwise conflict with it, for example. So, so it's also a mixing tool. It's also a mixing tool, Dude. Uh, 100%. And we've also got a harmonizer, which... There's a bit of latency, so probably drums is the worst example to put it on, but it's just also connected. All these are connected with the global hub scale and key, as you can see there. And um, if I pin it locally, it sort of like looks more active or whatever, but in global mode, it shows up like that. And then you can also add your different frequency shifts. Cool. So listen, it's just after two. I don't mind going a little longer. If possible, if, you know, because we had that request from more than one viewer about st starting a new thing from scratch just to see the, the workflow. It doesn't have to go crazy, but, like, if you were to add a part to this, right? Right. Like, what what would you, you know, well, you kind of first need to decide musically what's going to, it's already pretty busy, right? What else is going to fit in here? So, you, if you want, you it, maybe it's easier to start fresh. I think I'll start with, uh, I'll go back to our drums, leave our drums going. Okay. Have, have some electro, some electro activity okay. um, as per the theme you announced at the start. Yeah. But I think what could be cool is to use that chance engine to generate a new synth idea. Sure. And so let's just use that pattern based sound again. So I know we're not starting complete. Well, yeah. People seem to like that, so I'm just going to um, option drag the instrument itself onto another track. Okay. And um, yeah, then I'll start with the chance engine. So what's on that inst that device on there already is your sound. This is the wavetable with just the one filter macro okay. assigned. So now, now that's you're gonna, all you really need at the end of the day. And now you're gonna make um, a uh, you're gonna make a baseline. If I switch it to generate mode, it's going to start generating 16th notes. So I'm going to move it down a couple octaves. Okay. So right away, I can just add a bit of octave randomization with some hold randomization as well. Hold is going to do what? It's going to um, sustain or hold the note to make to enforce a glide. Okay. So shorter, longer notes. So it's the chance that the notes will glide because it's a monophonic synth with glide enabled. Got it. And I could create a more interesting rhythmic pattern, for example, every third sixteenth note, resetting every bar. And I can offset that so it's not starting on the one. So now it's, that pattern is starting on 
the second sixteenth of the bar. Got and it. okay, so for any parameter that's not clearly labeled, they're all info view annotated. So you can always just hover over with the mouse and you'll see there in the lower left, uh, pulse rate, offset multiplier, loop reset, everything is described. But uh, now I can start randomizing the pitch and it turns into, you know, uh, generative, melodic, sure. whatever. So before it was but, just doing octaves on one note, now it's transposing the note up and down over time. Exactly, and the octaves will still be transposing, but this is like the pitch within an octave that's being randomized, but by default, that pitch is being randomized every single note. So I'll just go back to our full 16th note pattern, and we can say, much like I was showing with the sample and hold, that we don't want to necessarily generate a random value every single note, we can say um, generate a new pitch every eight sixteenth notes. It'll inherit whatever that okay. uh, bass rate is. So I'll turn the octave off so we can hear. So now the pitch is randomizing every eight sixteenth notes, but you can set it to something weird like 15. And we can constrain the octave range so it doesn't go too low down or quite too high. so far. Exactly. You don't want it to get muddy or out of the bass range. You want it to be in that couple of octaves that work better, be best. Exactly. And now Stutter. we can put a little velocity randomization, set the floor on that so it's not quite so low. And just dial the playback so it's not quite so busy. And again, if you want to um, capture this, to um, to MIDI, that's yeah. recommended. Yeah, because uh, I've you know that's what I've been thinking this whole time is that it's just constantly wandering. But I've I've heard already. Whoa, a couple of really cool patterns that I would like to hear repeat. You you probably should be capturing MIDI from the start, and as soon as you hear something you like, take note of it. That's always a great idea. Just have MIDI kind of listening and. You know, live does a great job of that with um, MIDI that's being played by hand. But I wonder, let's see, this track is armed. What happens? Yeah, the capture button is not even lit up. So yeah, you do have to kind of keep things recording in yeah. real time. But I'm, I'm usually getting things dialed in until I like how they sound. I've just put this noise frequency modulation. So this is our frequency modulation uh, so, effect. That and, sounds cool. Um, I'm just going to put it on the pads to show how so, we can use any other signal in the set as a frequency modulation source. Dude. So I'm going to use, I'm going to use you the- You just had to throw um, in another new thing, didn't you? This is the last <laughs> thing. I, well, I had to show the XFX a little bit. Yeah. It's one of the, one of the more fun options beyond the fact that you can play the FM by a MIDI, which is pretty cool already, but we can also, um, like for example, which which are the hi-hats that are playing? I think it's these ones. So let me just solo the, the pads. So now those chords are going to determine the frequency of the frequency modulation oscillator? There we go. Now the now the pads are being frequency modulated by that kick drum, which is a little easier to hear. The hi hats were just too quiet. Okay. But I've got a modulation gain here. Oh, I see. And all of these extra effects, they've got the output settings with the scale and key, glide if applicable. They've also got a unique input setting where you can specify that the effect should only be applied to signal above a certain threshold or a crossover. It's got a crossover mode, so I can say only apply frequency modulation above 313 hertz Detroit or um, above, say, minus 30 decibels uh, would then receive the frequency Dude. modulation. Um, and that's for all the uh, X effects. They all have those input settings. That's great. And as well as an attack and decay time to control how the effect is applied when the signal does exceed that th threshold. So 
Uh, yeah, I f I'm sure um, it's been like a lot for people maybe, or maybe there's hunger for more. I don't know. I know we've gone over time, but I'm also eager to take any questions that sure. might have come up. Um, I think we're actually good. We've, we're a little past the hour, but not too much. And I think we've s squeezed in everything we needed to. Yeah. Awesome. I think we're good. I, I'm, I love a lot of these ideas and anything. If I, if you say something, then immediately my brain goes, oh, I could do this and that. Like, that's the whole point. So I hope that others out there watching today are like, you know, on the one hand, there's the technical complexity of how these things work. But when you hear it being used and you realize oh that effect that reaction that type of a sequence like and it inspires an idea and gives you a direction to explore whether or not you're using these devices doesn't matter it's inspirational and i hope though that people will check out your devices because as complex as they are you can get incredible results you know and um you have some you must have some tutorials on some of this stuff of your own available. Oh yeah, we've got... Whoa! Um, yeah. <laughs> we've got a bunch of uh, tutorial walkthroughs on all our devices on our YouTube channel. I need to do one for the up... Well, there, no, there's a list of the new features and the updates. I should maybe do a new one to walk through them a little more deliberately. But yeah, there's a lot of uh, usually 20 to 30 minute in-depth walkthrough videos on our YouTube channel. But right. yeah, no, exactly what you said. This I've heard it referred to as the realm of adjacent possibility in certain scientific fields. Nice. And it, it, it's driven me in my musical practice and my artistic practice, but also in building these devices. Exactly what you said when you discover, oh, wait, if X can do Y, then Y can do Z. It's that whole <laughs> moment of... Uh, yeah, eureka moments of, yes, of discovering your possibilities expand before your very eyes. And um, yeah, if I hope you'll all, if you're interested in the stuff, you know, use the discount code that yeah. uh, that John posted, but also grab the free devices. Um, if you go on our website to the to the free Max uh, part of the browser, there's we got the Mod Squad, which is 16 different modulators and uh the note realm and a bunch of other stuff bunch of other stuff so a couple but, uh, of people have asked would be great to build a whole track from scratch with your devices so we could do this again i was thinking that it might be good to do that not live like do a, a video together or just on your own whatever we want to do here at 343 because wait you're also an instructor for 343 occasionally right i am it's true it's so true if you guys want to get up close and personal and learn directly from Noah, you can. I mean, are you just teaching locally in Berlin or are you also doing online? Um, I am mostly doing in person here, but I think I'll be switching to doing more online for 343 okay. in the future. So yeah. Great. So yeah, there's totally. one option if you want to learn more about what, what he's doing and how he does it. But I think doing some kind of like tutorials on using these devices in the creative context would be amazing. And I'm sure there's a bunch of people here that would, would eat that up. That's a great idea to go from, yeah, point A to, to point Z with all of these and, yeah, make a tune. Sure. That's the whole idea for sure. Great. So I think we could wrap things up. Thanks again, Noah, for being a guest. And it was fun as I it totally ex anticipated. I knew I was going to enjoy this because awesome. <laughs> you're making some cool music and you're making really cool devices and with and unique ideas behind them to, like, create cool music. So that's what we like to do here. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out today nerding out with us with the manifest audio stuff that noah has developed and you've we've got in the pinned in the chat is that uh, discount uh code if you guys want to dive right in but it you, there's also a bunch of really good free devices which just check them out and um we're gonna sign off for today thanks again to all of you see you next time thanks for watching and don't forget we put out new content every week so don't forget to check back often and if you'd like to learn more about music production and take a course with us, or just join our community, come check us out at 343labs.com. See you next time.